Son, into the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, finally the day has dawned when you desire to eat the Passover with your holy disciples. We ask you to show us your heavenly banquet on the last day, to foster in us a desire for it, and to lead us to it that we may be seated at your table there, and we glorify and thank you, your Father and your Holy Spirit, forever. Amen. Peace be with the church and her children. Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to the Lamb of God who voluntarily became the Paschal Lamb and offered himself as a redeeming sacrifice. He truly gave us his body as food and his blood as drink, as a pledge of eternal life. To the good one be glory and honor on this feast and all the days of our lives and forever. Christ, you are the word of the eternal Father, and you became man to save us. You fulfilled the laws of the old covenant to lead us to worship in spirit and in truth. You washed the feet of your apostles to teach us humility and love. You ate the Passover lamb with them so that you yourself might become our Passover and our lamb. We glorify and thank you because you offered yourself for us as an eternal Paschal sacrifice. You gave us the mystery of the Holy Eucharist as a pledge of the resurrection and new life. You shared your eternal priesthood with the apostles and their successors, priests of the new covenant. Through your their hands you offer yourself to the Father as a pure and acceptable sacrifice. Now, O Lord, as we commemorate your Last Supper, we ask you with the fragrance of this incense to give your church priests who will offer you in sacrifice, celebrate your mysteries, and make known your teachings, that your name may be blessed, your kingdom come, and your will be done on earth. Grant forgiveness to sinners and peace to the world. 
Grant us good life so that we may pass safely from this world to everlasting life and in your heavenly kingdom to sit with you at your table of your eternal and paschal banquet. We raise glory and thanks to you, to your Father and to your Holy Spirit forever. sacrifice, O host and banquet, accept our incense and our prayers at this Paschal feast in which you allowed us to participate by giving us your body to eat and your blood to drink. May we also share in your passion, death, and resurrection, that we may one day meet you at your heavenly banquet. We glorify and thank you, your Father, and your Holy Spirit forever. Amen. cup filled with his blood shed to save us. Take and drink it for forgiveness and for new life.
reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish and her children forever. Brothers and sisters, for I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it, and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes again. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord unworthily will have to answer for the body and blood of the Lord. A person should examine himself and so eat bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. That is why many among you are ill and infirm, and a considerable number are dying. If we discerned ourselves, we would not be under judgment. But since we are judged by the Lord, we are being disciplined so that we may not be condemned along with the world. Praise be to God always. This is my body and the cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. The apostles could come forward, please. The chair on this end to my right is Peter at the end here. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. From the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John, who proclaimed life to the world. Let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. Praise, glory, and honor the most holy trinity. Before the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior, announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Apostles, if you want, you can turn around this way, just for the beginning of the gospel, and our many apostles, too. Now, before the... Oh, no, no, you're not reading the gospel. No, I'm not. This is your proclamation. Never mind. You do your normal proclamation. No, at the beginning of the gospel. Oh, I'm sorry. Before the feast of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced a Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to hand him over. 
So during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he arose from the supper, took off his outer garments, he took a towel and tied it around his waist. Okay, now we'll go to the front table. Because you can put them on. Um, just set them at the corners of the altar. So thank you, gentlemen, for coming this evening. I'm going to ask you to do it at the end of the initial ceremony. The gospel is going to continue. We're going to get to turn to the gospel. And then when we're finished, the normal blessing of the gospel, I'm just going to ask you to fold all the chairs up and just put them, you don't have to take them to the same chairs as the new stuff. Just lean them against the front shield of the kingdom. And thank you for being in the process. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and to go to the Father. Now he loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already pointed into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. During supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his other dark robe, and tied his all around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him.
Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and to go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into the basin, and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him.
Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon, Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, tied a towel around himself, and then poured water into a basin, and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. Jesus came to Simon Peter, said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus answered, You do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. And Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. And Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. And Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus said to him, One who is bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him, and for this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. And he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are correct, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, so you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have sent you an example that you also should do as I have done.
This is the truth. Peace be with you. Praise and bless Thank you, gentlemen. You can now fold your chairs and place them against the front. For I have received from the Lord that which I have also delivered unto you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. In the end, the whole work of redemption is about bringing the individual into contact with God. It's about divine presence. A divine presence which ultimately, when we are in the beatific vision, the kingdom in its fullness, what we call heaven, it is a contact spirit to spirit with that divine presence. And as I was explaining a few days ago to a few people, now on this earth we try to consider what God is, to think about who he is, what he is, what has been done for our work of redemption. And we try to in certain times wrap our heads around this thing because we're thinking through ideas and notions. But the beatific vision the divinity face to face with the human consciousness, the human intelligence, the human spirit, is not the human mind any longer trying to conceptualize or to have a notion or an idea of the divinity. It is that the divinity becomes that idea in the mind. It doesn't make any sense, I know. But what it means is that on this earth, we try to think about God. But in the beatific vision, our thinking is God. And until the day that we arrive at that point, it's why the beatific vision transfigures the person into glory. While we're on earth, of course, it doesn't happen. And so we go through the years and the decades of our lives trying to understand and to enter into more profound grasp of what this presence is. And that's why what St. Paul is talking about in this letter to the Corinthians, the central presence that we have in the Christian church is this presence of Jesus Christ himself. Not just simply a presence of grace, sanctification, the action of God, but God himself in his historical, incarnate, substantial reality. And so what St. Paul is talking about is that the Eucharist in its essence is divine presence transmitted from generation to generation. We always have the beautiful occasion here to celebrate at lunch. We have the bishop comes, Bishop Dealey comes, Vicar General comes, and of course all of our sisters come from the convent of the Blessed Sacrament. It was originally their festivity in honor of the day that institutes the Eucharist and institutes the priesthood. They are inseparable. By the way that the priesthood goes, the Eucharist goes. And by the way the Eucharist goes, goes the priesthood. They are metaphysically, transcendentally related. Because it's the consecration of the apostles at the same moment on that night of the Last Supper. Even as one of them is on the edge of betraying him. That he, com he commits to their care this divine presence. This is my body. This is is my blood. You accomplish this which I have done in my name. And so this presence is transmitted, and that's why St. Paul, the quotation that we have today, he begins by saying, what has been given to me, I have also confided to you, the church at Corinth, the presbyters, the priests who follow St. Paul. And from generation to generation, we have had this reality. Because while we're on earth, before our thinking becomes truly divine in contact with the infinite hidden one, the best that we can do is our contact with our Lord substantially present within the Eucharist. 
So in this epistle, what St. Paul is doing with the Corinthians, he's trying to elevate them actually. As we mentioned, the Corinthians are always having difficulty within their parish. And he's trying to elevate them to understand what they're actually doing. So he says that for often as you shall eat of this bread, this body of Christ, and drink of this chalice, you shall proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. And this word, sometimes it'll say in your translations, announce. But the word is proclamation, and it's the same word which is used in the Greek to designate the announcing of the gospel. So that not only for the baptized individual, when they participate in the Eucharist, do we have that moment of contact with the divine reality of our Lord Jesus Christ, but the action itself also announces and proclaims the gospel around us also. It becomes efficacious to the extension of the kingdom of God. There are two aspects that he brings into this on this evening. So that the reality of death, resurrection, and his appearance at the end of the world, the parousia, which as you listen to the anaphora tonight with St. John, after the words of institution in Aramaic, Make special attention to the prayers that follow after, that we profess your resurrection. It's what we call the amnesis in Greek. And what it means is the memorial, that what is this? This is my body, this is my blood. Even if it's sung in an Aramaic, this reality of saying, the transformation that takes place within the Eucharist, that we recognize this profession of your death and of your resurrection, and we await your appearance that will conclude time. That's what we're doing in that moment when we sing those verses. It's why Dame Fima was, a, she was exuberant for us to go back to actually reciting the whole section. Because when I came, if you remember, you did like the first three lines of five. But the whole reality of our Lord's presence, presence in death on the cross, that's why we've left it also here, still shrouded in black. That reality of that divine glory and resurrection. And that divine reality which will be in the appearance of justice and glory that will make time end. Which is why then St. Paul gives this directive. Discern this reality that you participate in. Never let it become routine. Some of you, if you remember when you were little, you always had people in the pews at the time of communion. It just depended on the disposition of the person. Nobody cared. You go forward. But if you go forward, you go forward with this desire to have this contact in Holy Communion, which is that divine presence. Which is why St. Paul says then, Whoever, whosoever shall eat without discernment, which is why later on he says, it says, it's why among you, many of you are ill and have fallen asleep. You've died. Because you have not entered into this mystery of presence in the proper disposition. He doesn't say that the people who died were evil. But he says that there's a lack of discernment among you Corinthians that you don't understand what this divine presence of the Eucharist is. And that the spirit of the Lord, that discernment of the Lord's presence, he says, must be present. Or else it brings disorder because we're not ready to receive this divine presence. And so that's why he says, Whoever, whosoever shall eat this bread or drink this chalice of the Lord unworthily, without discernment, without proper disposition, shall be guilty of the body and the blood of our Lord. So he's not saying that we don't approach it, but we approach it with the same awe that we, that we will have hopefully on the day of our death, of entering through the veil of death to pass to that divine presence of vision. But before that time, that desire of vision and that quest for vision has to be present to us each day in our prayers and most especially when we approach the divine presence which has been transmitted to us 
in the disposition. This is what we celebrate this night. The beauty of what our Lord has given to us by leaving himself substantially present to us, transmitted to us, to transform us, in fact, day to day, for those who come to Mass, at least on the Sundays when we are present and on these feast days, because we desire to see light, we desire to have that vision, and we desire that our spirit and our minds and our souls and ultimately our bodies in resurrection also become divinized. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, special translations for the hymn of transfer in the pews, the sheet, for this evening. Mighty Lord and God, you accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you. Out of their love for you and for your holy name, shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. Amen. 
as we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the Saint Mary, Saint Jude, and Saint Charbel. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers, and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom this sacrifice is offered, for the intentions of the Catholic Extension Society and its donors. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering. Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Lord God and Father, you are true love, security that is ever sure, and hope that never fails. Grant love, happiness, and everlasting peace to your children here before you. Make us worthy to give one another the greeting of peace with pure hearts and souls, and with a holy kiss worthy of your blessed name that we may raise glory to you, to you, only Son, and to you, Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace to you, O holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O minister of God. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let each one of us give a greeting of peace to his neighbor with love and faith, which are pleasing to the Lord. before your majesty, send us your grace and glorious blessings from the heights of your heavenly sanctuary, that we may glorify you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, you sent your beloved Son at the appointed time for our salvation, and he gave us these holy and life-giving mysteries. Do not look upon us as strangers, and do not turn your holy face away from us because of our many sins. For you alone are the Holy One, with your only Son and your Holy Spirit, 
now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father and the grace of the only begotten Son and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit. Let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship Him with humility. It is right and just. It is right and just to praise you, O Lord of all in heaven and on earth. The powers on high in the heavens where they dwell glorify you. The fiery ranks exalt you, the cherubim bless you, and the seraphim worship you. They cry out and they proclaim. you sent your Son into the world. He descended, became flesh, and suffered and was crucified for us, who had distorted his image. Kyrie eleison, Vobiyeo mohadoktum chashadi le mabed chayi, en sabe lachma mida kodi shotom, Proclaim my death until I come again. 
We remember your death, O Lord, your rest and resurrection, we await your second coming. We implore your mercy and compassion. We ask for the forgiveness of sins. May your mercy rest upon us. O Christ our God, we remember your plan of salvation and we implore your goodness. When you come in glory with your holy angels and all await the reward they deserve. And when you place the sheep to the right and the goats to the left. Do not look upon us as strangers to your household and do not turn your holy face away from us. Do not let our sins and offenses pierce your holy heart and do not separate us from you. For we have professed your holy name and have proclaimed your divinity. Rather treat us according to your promises. Forgive our sins, pardon us, and have mercy upon your inheritance. For this your repentant church implores you, and through you and with you implores your Father, saying, Have mercy on us, Almighty Father, O oh Lord, as we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them and because of them. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we profess our faith in you, and we ask you, have compassion on us, O oh God, have mercy on us and hear us. Awesome is this moment, O oh my beloved, for the living Holy Spirit descends and rests upon this offering for our sanctification. Let us stand with reverence as we pray. Anin Mario, Anin Mario, Anin Mario, Nite Modro Hochayo Kadisho, Unachen Alainu Al Korbono Pono. This hence he may make this bread the body of Christ our God. Amen. And make the mixture in this chalice the blood of Christ our God. Amen. May these holy mysteries sanctify the bodies and souls of those who share in them, cleanse their hearts, purify their thoughts, and be a pledge of the heavenly kingdom and new life. Forever. Amen. O Lord, we now remember in this sacrifice all the holy churches and the shepherds of the true faith, especially Francis, the Pope of Rome, Shara Peter, our patriarch of Antioch, Nisrata Peter, our retired patriarch, Gregory John, our bishop, and all bishops. With them, we remember the priests the deacons, and all who serve your holy church. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord of goodness, your holy church, and have mercy on all her faithful. In your compassion, heal all the wounded and injured among your flock. Punish injustice and strengthen all our brothers and sisters. Bestow the grace of conversion on all. With your indestructible power, strengthen the bishops of the true faith, that they may be upright and courageous in their apostolic office. May they show fidelity as they stand ever before your eternal justice. Unto your honor and glory, may they prove themselves upright, dauntless, and persevering in the task confided to them. To lead all the faithful, into the fullness of your redeeming light and glory. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace and stability of the whole world, for a blessed and prosperous year, for an abundant harvest, for the sick and the oppressed, for all who call upon your holy name on land, at sea, or in the air, 
and who profess that you are the true God. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, those who have presented the offerings upon this altar and those who desired to do so but were unable. Grant them their petitions. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Remember all the saints, the fathers, prophets, apostles, martyrs, and confessors, Mary, the mother of God, St. Joseph, St. Jude, St. Marin, St. Charbel, and all the righteous and the just. Through their prayers, make us worthy to stand among them. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, in your grace, those who have left us and have gone to you from the first Christian disciples to this day. They were sighing with the seal of baptism and received the precious body and blood of your Son. They wait for you in your life-giving hope. Raise them up on the last day and in your mercy forgive all their sins. Through our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, who is without sin, we hope to find mercy and forgiveness for our sins and for theirs. Grant rest, O God, to the departed and forgive the sins we have committed, with or without full knowledge. Grant us pardon, O God, and forgive us and the departed, so that your blessed name may be glorified in us and in all things. With the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. As it was, is now, and shall be forever. God the Father, you accept prayers and answer petitions. You taught us through your beloved Son to stand before you and to call upon you with pure souls and clear consciences, praying, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of our works, now and forever. Deliver us, O Lord, from every temptation and from harm of evil. For you have power over all. And we raise glory to you now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads before the God of mercy, before his forgiving altar, and before the body and blood of our Savior, who gives life to those who partake of him, and receive the blessing from the Lord. 
O Lord, in your grace and abundant mercy, bless those who bow before you. Make us worthy to share in your life-giving mysteries and to join the assembly of all your saints, that with them we may raise glory to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit, let each one of us look to God with reverence and humility and ask him for mercy and compassion. Holy gifts for the holy, with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One Holy Father, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit, blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is one in heaven and on earth, to him be glory forever. Make, Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy body, and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for a new life. O Lord our God, to you be glory forever.
Again and again we thank you, O Lord, and raise glory to you for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink. O lover of all people, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us, O Lord, compassionate and merciful. O lover of all people, have mercy on us. O gracious God and Father, how can we repay you for your goodness and for the salvation you have just given us? Who can give you the glory you truly deserve? In our weakness, and insofar as we are able, we worship, praise, and thank you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Peace be with you. With your Spirit. Jesus Christ, our God, we worship, thank, and praise you. We implore your goodness and abundant mercy for the salvation of the whole world, for the protection of the living and eternal rest to the departed, for the feeding of the hungry and the support of the needy, for the visiting of the hungry and the, for the visiting of the sick and the consolation of the grieving. 
For your grace dwell in them, and by your abundant mercy give them life. By your holy cross bless your people, and protect your inheritance. Adoration is due to you, to your Father, and to your holy and life-giving Spirit, now and forever. Amen. So, of course, at the end of this Mass, the Blessed Sacrament will be taken in procession up the center and around to the St. Jude Chapel. As we come through with the Blessed Sacrament veil, the proper disposition is to kneel. I know you're not used to kneeling, but kneeling in the adoration of our Lord, especially on this night as we pass by. Those who wish can follow in procession to the chapel because the chapel will be left open for those who want to spend time in adoration on this night of the Eucharist's institution. Now you can stand. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever. Amen. Amen.